Howdy. Uh, welcome back. Uh, my name is Brady. I'll be your host for today. And if you're here, well, you may be curious about lighting in some sort of virtual production setting. And if that just so is the case, you and I, we might have a little bit more in common than we thought. So lighting for virtual production, whether it's a LED wall, a projector, a background, something like Unreal Engine, regardless of which, you are still going to need to light your actual environment and light your actual scene, even though it is still in a studio. So in this video, we are going to be doing just that. We're gonna talk about some things that are gonna stay the same when shooting in a studio as opposed to out in the field, and then some things that may differ as well. So what we got here going on is uh, this rainy driving scene down the strip of Las Vegas. And we actually shot this all in Las Vegas at View Studios. And if you haven't seen my last video, I talk all about this setup and how we got to actually shooting and all of that. But in this video, we are talking about just the lighting itself, the lighting portion. But going into the first day of lighting in a scene like this with this LED wall, uh, I noticed that and quickly realized that the name of the game is lighting control. And that is the most important thing that I learned is controlling your lighting. And by that, I mean controlling it with stuff like egg crates, grids, flags to prevent the light from spilling pretty much anywhere that you don't want it on your subject. So you don't want it to spill on the wall, especially because if you spill light onto the wall, it's gonna wash out the entire picture and then you're just gonna lose your authenticity or realism because your wall is washed out. So light control is the name of the game throughout the entire shoot here that I'm gonna be breaking down. And I'm going to be breaking down these two different scenes. So the first one is this kind of like in the passenger door at the driver, the side driving shot. And then the other one is this slow push in coming from the rear of the car up from behind, kind of exposing the dashboard. So the first one that we're going to talk about is this side one, this side driving shot. And uh, it's, you know, it's a little bit complex because there's a lot of different lights playing into it. But I added in a lot of different factors because driving in an environment like this strip in Las Vegas, there are a lot of different uh, motivations for light. There's a lot of different light sources and a lot of uh, dynamicy, if that's a word, dynamic movements as far as the light goes. So I know I needed a handful of lights coming from all sorts of different directions. So bear with me, I wanna you know, take it step by step as to why I added each light source. So playing the shot out, you see that there's a lot of movement as we see that the scene passes in the background. You've got occasional brake lights, some headlights shining in on our driver, some colors changing, etc. So I wanted to emulate that with the lights that we had added. So the first light I'm gonna say is our key light essentially. And this is an Aperture 600C which is a beautiful light. And I wanted this to be mainly our key light, just making sure that our subject was lit very nicely. So to do this, I used the Light Dome 150, a very large, big soft source. And I had that kind of upstage actually, kind of on the driver's side of the vehicle. So that gave us a wrap of light coming across his face. And I just set this to about like a 4,000 Kelvin range just because um, it's a helicopter. But I had this light set to about 4,000 Kelvin because I still wanted it to have some warm characteristic, but not a total tungsten, just kind of like an ambience of warm light coming from whatever environmental sources that are out there. And the name of the game, like I said, is control. So on top of this light dome, we put a uh, egg crate as well, just to keep the light soft yet controlled coming in on our driver and kind of the cockpit area that he's sitting in. So that was the first light, just a 4,000 Kelvin soft key light. But then another light, I wanted to start, you know, pulling the subject from this dark area and creating some separation. And I did that with one more Aperture 600C. And on that, I put a narrow reflector dish, one of those 1200 uh, reflector kit dishes. And that was just to keep the light focused in straight, again, not spilling. And I put this still on the driver's side, the back of the vehicle relative to the camera, shining in, and this one is acting as a rim light, essentially so you can see that on the you know the edge of our driver the seat especially you're getting this nice edge light and you can already see we're utilizing something like three-point lighting even in a scene like this and then for the light color temperature I had this as well set to 4000 Kelvin just to match that kind of warmer color source that was coming from our key light so a struggle that I realized with shooting in a studio like this is that it's very very dark and you almost have too much shadow so you want to kind of control this shadow and still maintain this contrast but you want to fill in these really dark areas so with this next light that's exactly the purpose of doing so and I took a aperture Nova p300 and I saw that on the near side of our subject, kind of on the camera side, it was just really, really dark. So by taking this Nova and putting a softbox and again, a grid on it, 
Um, I, I set it to like this kind of deep purple or this bluish purple uh, color and I just shine that in on the front side of our sub subject. So it's just filling in a lot of this really, really dark shadow area because yes, we want shadows, but the fact of the matter is to make it look realistic, we're shooting in a city. There's gonna be a lot of city ambience, a lot of light spilling from many different ways. So the purpose of this light was just to act as that city ambience filling in these really, really deep shadows. So there's our three different lights and ultimately it's kind of a three point lighting setup of a key light, a rim light and a fill light. But the struggle with this is that we're driving in the scene. We're supposed to be acting as if our subject is driving. So if, you know, there's no dynamic light and moving light, it's kind of going to you know, blow our cover that we're just sitting in a studio. So I wanted to add two more lights that just add this again, dynamicy. And the first light that we added was an Aperture MT Pro. And this was just to simulate a brake light kind of like in front of our subject, just randomly triggering on and off. So I set this just to a deep red, like a zero degree HSI. And I set this hidden out of frame on the dashboard. And then what I did was just went into Sidus Link and just randomly triggered it on as we were rolling the film and just turning on and off as like a brake light was turning on and off in traffic. And then one more light that I wanted to add, which I think might be my favorite, is replicating a headlight. So to do this, we add an Aperture 600D. And on that, we had a spotlight mount. And that was just playing, uh, serving two purposes, really. One, headlights are just very hard sources. So we wanted to replicate that hard source coming from like a very pinpoint spotlight. Um, but additionally, one of the benefits that I loved about it was just adding this texture on his face as the headlight cast through the windshield because we had the rain trickling onto the windshield. So when the hard light is casting through all of these raindrops, you can see it kind of dribbling down on his face, which really looked awesome as a car was, you know, passing by as we turned this light. And all we did was have it on a stand and just turned it left and right, simulating like a car kind of turning out in oncoming traffic or something like that. So doing little things like this just to add some dynamic movement um, really don't take much, but still add a lot to the scene. And then one more thing that I wanna to touch on that's not really lighting, uh, but it has to do with the screen. You're working with a screen and you can see in the passenger uh, rear view mirror, sorry, the driver rear view mirror, you can see that there's actually roadway passing in the background. So it's important to kind of utilize that to your advantage. We put another plate of video way back where that mirror reflected onto of just the traffic going backwards. So it looks as if, you know, uh, you can see out the driver window, road is passing, and then in the mirror, you can also see that the road is passing. So just little details like that, just to really sell the entire scene a little bit more. And it's a great way to use the wall to your advantage. And that's a great segue into the next shot here, which is this push in from the back of the truck, sorry, back of the car. And you can see the lightning flashing and uh, the roadway going in front of us. And I wanna break this down. So again, you can see the lightning strike and the whole car light up. You can see it on the wall. It looks like the lightning struck outside, but you can also see it striking in the car. Now, originally we knew we wanted lightning and I thought we were gonna have to rig up a, like an aperture light and trigger a lightning strike overhead. But they reminded me that we can use the wall to our advantage. So if you're shooting in an LED, like a, a virtual stage like this, you can use it to your advantage. You don't need to just avoid having the light casting. So what we did was with the wall, they had an overhead ceiling panel uh, or LED panel overhead. So we took that same clip with the lightning striking and we put that on the ceiling and then just boosted the exposure of the clip a lot. So now as the lightning strikes on the wall in front of us, we actually have this whole ceiling lighting up as well, casting into the car. So rather than trying to rig up and time and match up this whole uh, aperture light, we just used the wall and cast it in uh, this lightning as it struck. But of course, this isn't going to be the only light that we can use and we still need to add in lights. So I wanna talk about a couple of the lights that we added in for this scene as you know, we're driving forward down the strip. So since we're on the strip of Las Vegas, uh, we're driving past a lot of different buildings. In a night scene like this, there's a lot of different environmental sources, different RGB colored lights, passing lights, fluctuating lights, etc. So to emulate that, um, and we didn't have uh, uh, many hands on deck, so we kind of had to be very minimal as to what we could do. So for this, I used an Aperture 600C because it's a colored light. It's pretty much like a Nova or the same RGBWW setup they've got. So I put that same light dome 150 on it, again, with a grid, and I had that on a stand. So I could just push the stand going by the car. So that was my role is just pushing the stand kind of as like the car is driving by a building my light was that building that was driving by. But then additionally, while doing that, I had Sidus Link pulled up on my phone. So I was just subtly fluctuating 
and the different colors that you know I'd seen on the strip when I was there. So some blues, some greens touching into the reds as well. So it really just felt like as a building was passing, a billboard was flashing different lights and different colors and that started to give a dynamic color coming from frame right. But then additionally, there's a lot of different sources. There's not always just one building. There's a building there, 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 whatever. So I put one more light and that was an Aperture Nova P300 with a softbox and a grid. And I think I just had that set to like a a magenta or some sort of in this pink range just to add a little bit more color contrast and this light was just static shining in on the frame right the same direction as that uh, 600c but just filling in more shadows so like there's a little bit more color contrast going on so two lights on that frame right side but then looking at the frame left side it was just very you know it was right heavy there's a lot of shadow over here so what I did for this other light was just set up a very large soft source and remember that um, key light that we had before, you know, upstage was that 4000 Kelvin, um, you know, rappy key light that we had on that side shot. That was something that I carried over into this shot as well. So we took that same uh, Aperture 600C and I was struck this just through a uh, like a 12 by 12 half grid frame. And we put that as far out of frame on frame left as we could. And essentially, this just being a side light, you can see it start to cast in on the left side of our driver from the back and just creating this kind of wrappy edge light, almost key light, just filling in a lot of this shadow ambience on frame left. So this scene was a little bit more subtle than the last one. We didn't have as many dynamic light sources, but it all kind of goes back to using the wall to your advantage. We got a lot of dynamic or realism coming from the wall and using the lightning strike uh, on the screen above just to really light up and act as an additional light source. But with virtual stages like this popping up all over the place, I wanted to just take the time to just share with you what it's kind of like lighting in a volume like this again whether it's an led wall or projector or something like utilizing unreal engine in a stage like this uh it's it's becoming more and more common and more and more within reach again if you haven't seen the other video that i just put out uh last week it's uh all about the setup you know the production side of things what it camera settings uh what camera i use with all of this so go check that video out as well and additionally, I'm going to be doing a part two to this with a couple more shots of what it looked like lighting that. So I'm going to head out here. I hope you guys like this. If you did, share it with a friend. Tell them I say hello. Uh, you know, shake their hand for me. And I will see you in the next video. All right. Adios. Bye-bye.